In this uh, video, we are going to take a look at the different components that make up the HP 3000 and uh, how they're cabled together. So we're going to start by looking at the front of the system and the different uh, boxes that are in the different cabinets. And then we're going to flip around and take a look at the cabling that's on the backside that uh, connects all the uh, different peripherals with the CPU. OK, let's start by looking at the front side. This is the HP 3000 system we're going to be taking a look at today and, and in this video what we're going to do is uh, just go over the hardware really quickly and uh, then we're going to power the system up and boot the MPE operating system and log on uh, a couple of terminals since this is a, a time sharing system. So just real quickly to go over the hardware. Uh, this is HP 7974 real tape drive. It used tapes like these. It's a storage medium. Pretty common on uh, many computers, mainframes, 50s, 60s, 70s, all the way up through the 80s. This is a particular drive. It's a start-stop drive. We have two other tape drives on this system. Uh, two streaming tape drives. These are both 7980. XCs, they have built-in compression in them. Uh, in a different video, we're going to use this streaming drive here to actually load the MPE operating system onto a brand new, do a brand new install of the MPE operating system. Right here, this, this cabinet right here is a CPU cabinet uh, and with a couple of disk drives in it. These two panels right here are the actual CPU. This CPU is a low-end uh, HP 3000 system. It's a Micro 3000 XE, and um, it's what's called a uh, classic version of the 3000. The 3000 was originally introduced by Hewlett Packard in the early 1970s and uh, was marketed up through just a few years ago, probably uh, 2010 or so. Uh, this again, this is a 16-bit uh, mini computer stack architecture. This particular model was the Series 37, which is just this part here. This is an expanded, uh, has an I/O expansion in the Micro XE. Uh, again, it has a uh, stack architecture, which means that the, the basic memory data structure that the hardware implements is a stack. So there's push pop instructions. If you want to do an add, you push two operands on the top of the stack and the uh, add instruction has no actual operands. They're just implied as being the two top uh, elements that are on the, the current data stack and so forth. Uh, this particular 3000 was introduced in the early 1980s, about 1983 or 84. The Series 37 it was the first VLSI version of the 3000. Before that, everything was either uh, discrete or TTL uh, parts. So uh, CPU here, these two uh, panels right here are uh, disk drives, and we're gonna use these two disk drives as our, what are called system volumes. They're gonna hold the operating system and all the user files that we have. We have a second cabinet here that has a cartridge tape drive in it at the top. And this is what a cartridge tape would look like compared to a real tape. So it would just slide right in here and get red. We're not going to be using that one. The cartridge tape drive is really slow. And this one uh, isn't working right now. And then we have a storage array here and a larger HP 7937. Uh, Winchester disk drive. And then this third cabinet, we just have a couple of other Winchester drives. We don't have actual I.O. capacity in this CPU. We could add another uh, I.O. channel board uh, and, and uh, plug these drives in, but we don't have one in there right now, so we're not going to uh, worry about that configuration. And then the last uh, cabinet over here that we have in this configuration is a 2563 line printer. So this is a pretty typical configuration for a smaller 3000 that you might find as a departmental server or in a remote office, that kind of thing. And again, it was a time sharing system, so you would have maybe 
10 to 20 terminals hooked up to a system this size, doing data entry, um, accounting, financial type software, that kind of thing. Because the 3000 was uh, created as a small, easy to use business mini computer uh, in the early 1970s. Uh, ran the MPE operating system, uh, which was a multi-user operating system, and we'll see that uh, after we boot up the system uh, and get the MPE operating system running. So what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and power on all the peripherals first. So I'm going to start with the tape drive here, and we're just going to hit reset on that. Uh, these two disk drives are actually already running. I'm going to power up these. And the last peripheral I'm actually going to uh, uh, power up is going to be the CPU. And just as a note, okay, I'm going to power that up. Uh, on this particular configuration, what I have is usually there would be a serial uh, terminal as the console just so we can see both the front of the CPU and the activity that's going on in the console. I'm going to be using a, a PC over here running reflection software as our console. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like when we uh, start to power all that up. Okay, this is the back of the, the 3000 and what we want to look at right now is just how the cabling is uh, put together. Um, we have the tops on each of these two cabinets, the cabinet with the CPU and the cabinet with uh, the disk drives. And to get to the inside, we just pull up on the top of the back and it slides forward and off. And this first particular cabinet actually has a cover on the back, but that just pulls off also. Just take that off, set it aside. And then we um, take the cover off this cabinet here. Set that aside. So what we can see inside uh, are the CPU boxes here, cabling to various peripherals. Underneath are the disk drives. Over here on the top is the cartridge tape drive. There's a disk array underneath it. And then the 7937 disk drive on the very bottom. So first thing we see is all the, the HPIB or the data cables going to different peripherals like this cable here is going to the 7959 so if we just trace it it's going to go down here to the bottom this is going to the disk drive that's in this particular cabinet the box is actually underneath the CPU so it's cabled up there this cable is going to the tape drive this cable here labeled cab 1 7937 we can trace it. It is going to go across here and then down and hook up here on the back of the 7937 uh, disk drive. And then on this cabinet, what we've done, <clears throat> since we can daisy chain, since we can daisy chain these drives, what we've done is in the same cabinet, we've just hooked up the 79. Uh, on the 7937 uh, plug, we've plugged in the tape drive and the other disk drive, and then this cable here goes back to the CPU. Also, on the back of the CPU cabinet, we have two of these breakout boxes here. What these are for is for hooking up other uh, additional terminals. So we can have a total of, I believe it's 16 terminals uh, or uh, modems. Uh, connected to this particular system here.